and start with the United States MD students. This is a chart that summarizes all of the applicants to various specialties, and what you should pay close attention to is the top column where anesthesiology is located. The red arrow is showing you that of a total of 1,129 applicants to anesthesiology, only 45 United States MD students did not match. So overwhelmingly, that's a pretty positive statistic. So only 45 of 1,129 students did not match. So that's very reassuring if you're a USMD student applying to anesthesiology. This is a summary table that goes over everything that's that you really need to even know as far as what are the statistics about matching to anesthesiology if you're a USMD student. Basically what this chart tells you is we can start from the top and go down. The mean number of ranks that you need, that is to say how many programs do you have to rank in order to match, is 14.6. So if you rank 14.6 programs, you're probably going to match. And you can see the column to the far right shows you what unmatched students did. So those 45 or 38 in this case that didn't match, they only ranked 5.3. So really no surprise that they're having worse success than somebody who ranked 14.6. Mean number of distinct specialties ranked. So basically what that stat is saying is, how, do people rank anesthesia in addition to another specialty? And 1.3 are the number of specialties that the average person matching to anesthesia is actually ranking. So what that number tells me is that in most situations, they're solely applying to anesthesia, but in some cases, they are applying to other specialties as well. Unmatched students had a propensity to rank more than just anesthesia, as you can see by 1.7 specialties ranked. So they're a little closer to two, which means at least more than one specialty is being ranked. The mean USMLE step one score for USMD students who matched was a 232. People that didn't match when applying to anesthesia had an average of a 212. The mean USMLE step two score of USMDs that matched was a 244 compared to a 226 in those who did not match. Mean number of research experiences, 2.9. Mean number of abstracts, presentations, and pubs, 4.5. And mean number of work experiences, 3.1. So, you know, it, it's a little vague at this point what really uh, constitutes a research experience. But nonetheless, the takeaway point is get involved and do as much as you can. Get as much on your CV as you possibly can. Mean number, of, mean number of volunteer experiences actually lower in the matched student pile than in the unmatched student pile. And my theory is that people that know they have weaker numbers tend to overcompensate with volunteer experience. So that's probably the reason for that. Uh, percentage who are AOA, 10.5%. That just makes perfect sense. Percentage who graduated from a top 40 U.S. med school based on NIH funding. So look at this. This is really interesting. 30.6 went to a top 40 USMD school. So almost one third of the students who are U.S. seniors that matched anesthesiology went to a top 40 uh, medical school. So really important to, to, to really go to a, the best medical school that you can. Percentage who have a PhD degree, only 2.5, and percentage who have another graduate degree, 15. So anesthesia, you know, one of those specialties that might have some MD, PhDs in it. But this is an overview table, really useful numbers to take a look at if you're interested in applying to anesthesiology. This table shows you the number of contiguous ranks uh, that students applying to anesthesiology had. And at what you can see here is that overwhelmingly people are ranking 16 or more programs, which is just completely consistent with the trend that we're seeing today where students are applying to like 40 to 60 programs across all specialties because they're so nervous about matching because of the growing pool of applicants. So my takeaway from this is I hope you have the luxury of traveling and interviewing at a ton of different places because you really, at this point, you need to be ranking this much just to keep up with the trend. Unfortunately, it's, it's something that we can't control. This is your probability of matching based on your number of ranks. And what you can see here is if you're a USMD student, once you get to around 13 and a half places ranked, you're, you pretty much have a 100% probability of matching, which makes sense, right? Because if you're ranking 13 to 14 programs, you've at least been interviewed by 13 or 14 programs, which probably means that you're more than qualified to go into the specialty. So I think it makes perfect sense that at that number, you're approaching a 100% probability of matching. 
But I will say that this slide should reassure United States MD students because as you can see, even if you only rank something like three programs, you still have over an 80% chance of matching. So anesthesiology is not as competitive these days as it was say 20 years ago when it was a really desired specialty. It's still a great field to go into, but it's not nearly as competitive. So you can match it with much more ease today than you could in years past. These are two of my favorite charts. This shows you a curve of the USMLE Step 1 scores and USMLE Step 2 scores for the USMD seniors who both matched and did not match. So the dark blue boxes are people that matched. And what you can see here is that on average, people have the most success matching into anesthesiology when they're scoring between a 231 and a 240. But you can also see here that even some USMD seniors with a 191 to a 200, which is a really low Step 1 score, 18 are still matching. So this really reinforces my point here that anesthesiology is not what it used to be. And you can totally match even if you have a less than average USMLE step one score. Now that said, your goal should be a 230 or higher based on this data. USMLE step two scores, most people are having the most amount of success when they're scoring between a 241 and a 250. But as you can see here, still 49 USMD seniors matched even having scored a 211 to 220 on step two and normally everybody's score goes up on step two so if you're trying to set a goal for yourself i would say 240 or higher on step two this is your probability of matching as usmd senior based on your usmle step one score and what this is showing you is that if you can break a 240 on step one you have a 100 percent chance of matching into anesthesiology so your goal, if you want to give yourself a 100% chance, should be 240 or higher. But your realistic goal, if you just want to comfortably go into the uh, interview season and ranking season, 230 or higher. So that wraps up our US MD seniors. Now let's talk about the DO students in the United States. Here's the overview chart. And what you can see here is that 29 US DOs did not match of the 296 who applied to anesthesiology. So pretty good number there. This is the summary table and we'll go through this just like we did with the MD students. The average number of total ranks that you need to match into anesthesiology if you're a DO student is 11.2. Unmatched DOs only ranked on average 2.8 programs. So of course, no surprise that they're not matching. Mean number of distinct specialties ranked 1.3 and 1.9. This was very similar with the MD students I'm not surprised to see that the number is very similar. Mean complex level one score is a 571 for students that matched, but a 483 for students that didn't match. So again, this is useful for goal setting. If you're trying to say what complex level one should I shoot for if I want to match into anesthesiology, the answer is 570. Mean complex, uh, mean complex level two score for matched DOs was a 602. And for unmatched DOs, it was a 508. So likewise, if you're setting goals, try to get a 600 or higher on level two. Mean USMLE step one score was a 227 in those who matched and a 213 in DOs who didn't match. The mean USMLE step two score was a 239 for those that matched and a 221 for those that didn't match. This is very, very similar to the USMD students. So again, for goal setting purposes, your step one score goal should be like a 230-ish. Your step two should be a 240. If you can hit those numbers along with your complex goals, then you should be fine. Research experiences were 1.8 for DOs. You know, by and large, DO schools offer less research opportunities than MD schools. So that figure is a little bit lower. Mean number of abstracts, presentations, and pubs, 2.5. Work experiences was 3.2. Volunteer experiences, 6.2. Percentage who have a PhD degree, less than one. That makes perfect sense. There are not a lot of DO schools that offer a DO PhD. Um, and people that have PhDs tend to be more academic based. So they are more likely and predisposed to ending up at an MD school where research opportunities are abundant. Percentage who have another graduate degree, only 25% for our DOs matching in anesthesiology. This is showing you how many contiguous ranks uh, different DO students had that matched and just like the MD chart, overwhelmingly, you need 16 or more. So if you're preparing for interview season, you want to apply to 
a lot of programs if you're a DO going into anesthesiology because you're going to end up having to rank around 15 plus. This is your probability of matching based on those contiguous ranks. And what you can see here is that if you're a DO student and you want to give yourself a 100% probability of matching, you need to rank at least 12 and a half programs. This is the Comlex Level 1 and Comlex Level 2 uh, chart showing you matched versus unmatched. And what this tells me is that if you want the best chance of matching, your Comlex Level 1 should be between a 551 to 600. Ideally, uh, for goal setting purposes, I would say shoot for the 600 because when that score starts with a 6, it's a lot sexier. And for Comlex Level 2, most success 601 to 650. So just try to break 600 on both, honestly. But this should reassure you a little bit that if you have a 501 to 550, still 63 DOs ended up matching to anesthesiology. You really need to break a 500 or higher, though. If you don't get at least a 500 on level one, you're going to have a lot of problems, as you can see, illustrated by the precipitous drop off from 501 to 550 down to 451 to 500. Level two, still try to break 600, but you can still match if you're between 551 to 600, even 501 to 550. But again, goals are things that you want to achieve. It should be 600 or higher. This is your probability of matching as a DO student based on your Comlex Level 1 score. What you can see here is that if you're scoring somewhere around a 670, you have a 100% chance of matching. So if you cannot see yourself doing anything in the world but anesthesiology, then your goal should actually be higher. It should be 670. That gives you a 100% chance of matching. These are the USMLE Step 1 and USMLE Step 2 scores of DO students who elected to take USMLE when matching in anesthesiology. And what this shows me is that if you're goal setting here, you want to be between a 221 to 230 on step one. Ideally, 230 or higher would be way more beneficial to you. Um, USMLE step two scores, you want 231 plus because between 231 and 240, students have the greatest chance of matching. We're going to finish up by talking about the statistics for IMGs. Here is our overview chart. What you can see here is that for United States IMGs, 70 did not match and 122 matched. So there were a total of 192 US-based international medical graduates and 70 of those 192 did not match. For non-US IMGs, there were a total of 199 people that applied and 79 did not match. So these are a little bit more sobering statistics. Anesthesiology is not a very IMG friendly specialty. So, you know, take that for what you will. Here's the summary chart. We'll start with US IMGs. For those who matched, they on average had 10.2 ranks. Their USMLE Step 1 score was a 231. Their USMLE Step 2 score was on average a 237. Uh, and I want you to jump down and look at their number of abstracts, presentations, and pubs. They had 2.1 versus 2.2 who didn't match, which tells me that if you are an IMG, the abstracts, presentations, and all that crap is pretty useless. I would really put all of your eggs into crushing USMLE Step 1 if you want to match in anesthesiology. Now let's talk about the non-US IMGs. So on average, those who matched had 6.9 total ranks. They had a USMLE Step 1 score of 240, a USMLE Step 2 score of 244, and their abstracts, presentations, and pubs were seven in both matched and unmatched. So once again, research really doesn't matter if you're an IMG. You really got to focus on your USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 score. Crush those things if you want to match into anesthesiology. This is the probability of matching for both US and non-US IMGs based on the number of ranks. And what you can see here is that for US IMGs, if you rank 17 places, you have a 100% chance of matching, which makes sense, right? If you're ranking 17 places, it means you've at least been interviewed by 17 programs, which means you're definitely qualified to go into anesthesiology. Unfortunately, for non-US IMGs, you never hit a 100% chance of matching no matter how many ranks you make. So you're going to have to work a little bit harder and crush USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 if you want to give yourself a better chance. This is the USMLE Step 1 score of IMGs and non-US IMGs who went into anesthesiology. So this data is a little bit more sporadic than with the MD and DO students that are based in the United States. But what I would say here is that if you want to match, you should try to break a 230, ideally even a 240, because it's just so random. The element of randomness here is a lot greater uh, for IMGs. For the non-US IMGs, you want to break a 240 
at least. You, you got to be higher if you're a non-US IMG than if you're a US IMG. If you're a non-US IMG and you're trying to set a goal for yourself, I, I would really make your goal 250 or higher. US IMGs could probably get away with like 235 to 240, but definitely set your sights on a high score. This is the probability of matching for US IMGs and non-US IMGs based on their US MLE Step 1 score. And what this should show you is that you can approach over a 90% chance of matching as a US IMG if you can score like a 246-ish. Uh, for non-US IMGs, if you want a 90% chance of matching, you're going to have to be closer to 255. But both of these curves never hit 100%. So again, nothing is guaranteed. You have to do as you know as best you can on USMLE Step 1 and USMLE Step 2 if you're an international medical graduate. This is the data for the USMLE Step 2 for US IMGs in the top chart and non-US IMGs in the bottom chart. Uh, the most success was had when Step 2 was between a 231 to 240 for our US IMGs and for our non-US IMGs between a 241 to 250. So pretty consistent with the Step 1 curve. But again, takeaway point here is you absolutely need to set your sights high on a high score if you're an IMG. But that's it, guys. I hope that this data was useful for you. This should give you more uh, information to put into your arsenal when you choose what programs to apply to, what to set your goals when you're taking USMLE and Comlex if you're a DO student. Anesthesiology, in summary, is a great field. It's really interesting. It's very procedural, has an opportunity to specialize into fellowships and do things like critical care or pain management. It's, it's really great if you want to change up your career and get out of the operating room and get more into a different environment, such as like an ICU or a private practice. Despite all of that and despite the still high pay of the field, it's really not as competitive as it used to be. There's a lot of different reasons for that. If you go on the forums and you like regurgitated forum bullshit, they'll all say that it's because of CRNAs. That's a discussion for a different day. Partially true, but mostly untrue. In conclusion, it's a great field and I wish you the best of luck if you're applying.